afternoon. And here is the weather forecast for tonight. We have a deep depression all over the UK, but rushing in from the Atlantic, we have a ridge of high pressure. Now, when that mixes with all this crap over the UK, the thunder clouds will gather, the humidity will rise, and we all know what's going to occur then, don't we? It's going to fucking piss down. So why don't you relax, grab a six-pack of beer, and sit back and watch Mike Lee live and uncensored. Number two. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Mike Reed. Probably. Listen. 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 I got up earlier and I fancy something to eat. I found a little restaurant around the corner. I said, I'm engaging the place behind the counter. I said, evening. He said, can I help you, sir? I said, yes. Give us a brandy. He said, certainly. I said, how much is that? He said, a penny. I said, a penny. He said, yeah. <laughs> I said, don't do a nice thick juicy tea bone steak with French fried potatoes, French fried onions, and an egg sunny side up, do you? He said, certainly, sir, but that comes to money. I said, how much? He said, fourpence. I said, fourpence. He said, yeah. <laughs> I said, who owns this place? He said, the geezer named Will Wright. I said, where's he then? He said, upstairs with my old woman. <laughs> Don't start that laugh, crying out loud. I said, what's he doing upstairs with your old woman? He said, same as I'm doing down here with his business. <laughs> oh. Two fellas in a lunatic asylum. One said to his mate, is that clock right? He said, yeah. He said, what's he doing in here then? <laughs> He walked into a barber's. He said, could you make me look like Barry Manilow? He said, certainly sit down and hit him on the nose with an airbrush. Spent. <laughs> Jewish fella up a ladder, cleaning his window. Two bob fell out of his pocket. He ran down the ladder. The two bob hit him on the head. <laughs> geezer walking through a Saudi Arabian market. There was a geezer having his hand stitched on. He said, I'll see you won your appeal. <laughs> Hey. Nice to be here again. Uh, and a bunch of wankers in Arabs, anyway. As a matter of fact, Saddam Hussein just had his library bomb by the Yanks. Burnt both his books. Sick as a parrot, he's only just finished covering one of them, too. What I want to know is if Saddam Hussein had married little Miss Muffet, would the Kurds have had their way? <laughs> Listen, another bleeding firm, them Italians in the last war, what a bunch of wankers they were, weren't they? Do you know why Italians wear moustaches? So they look like their mothers. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you an idea about Italians. Picture the scene, the Vatican Square, 365,000 Italians. Out comes a Pope out of his pigeonhole. Anyone who want to play, Dominos? <laughs> All the Italians shout back, we all want to play dominoes, don't we? He said, bravo Italians, today I've received a message from the President of the United States of America. In this message, he wants the next man on the moon to be an Italian for the glory of Rome and the glory of Italy. Hooray! Hooray! What I intend to do, brother Italians, is to pluck a feather from the dove of peace, throw it over the balcony. Whosoever the feather touches will be the next man on the moon. Hooray! 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 Pope got a dove, plucked a feather right up his arse. Dove with piss, oh. <laughs> English dove. <laughs> Dropped it over the balcony and began to pray. <laughs> When he finished praying, the Pope looks over the balcony and there's 365,000 Italians going, get away from me, you bastard. <laughs> God, piss off. Bunch of wankers. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I was in a bloody army conscription, Jesus Christ, what a waste of a life that was. Tens of thousands of young men, 18 years old, taken away from their mother's apron strings. Took me away, man. Sent me to Kenya to fight male male terrorism. What do I know about it at 18? Never forget the medical as long as I live. 16 of us in one room. Out comes a sergeant, typical sergeant, flat hat, moustache, stick under his arm, plenty of trap. Everybody strip off! In the middle of bleeding January. <laughs> it was freezing. 
I wound up with half inch and a dozen wrinkles. <laughs> we was playing that game hopscotch to keep warm. <laughs> no, no, leapfrog. <laughs> yeah, they threw me out of the game, said I wasn't jumping high enough. <laughs> Kenya, man, Kenya. It's another bleeding world to pop. And I'll never forget standing in front of the medical officer. I ain't got a stitch of clothes on. He looked me up and down. He went, you know, I've made small boy, haven't you? I said, we've only got a fight, haven't we? <laughs> so, will you turn it? What? And this Bill Clinton's on about woofters in the arm. We had a bunch of the gays in our bloody army. A bunch of us all. Sergeant said to one one day, he said, do you think you could kill a man? I oh, was it eventually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one was telling his mate about his first jump out of the plane, because I was standing in his bed, and the door opened, and the green light went, and I went, go, 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 and I thought, oh, no. <laughs> oh, sod, that's a bloody long way down. No, no. All of a sudden, his voice behind me went, get up, be playing, man. So I looked around, this massive black fella standing. I went, no, sod you, I'm not going, no. <laughs> Stop it, no, sod you, no. Well, this black fella undone his flies and his thing fell out. <laughs> Isn't it if you don't jump, man? I'm gonna shove this right up your tuchus. His friend said, did you jump? Oh, he said, a little bit. a bit of army work going and now he's got a bit of the SAS because he went to join the SES. Went up a sergeant behind the desk, he said, <laughs> I went to join the SES. <laughs> he said, yes, yeah, well, you look a reasonably fit young man. He said, take this Semtex, blow and blow something up, will you? He said, no, really. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes later, whoom, he come back and said, blow something up. <laughs> he said, good, he said, right, we'll take the intelligence test. Now he said, we start off with something very, very simple. He said, um, how many letters in the alphabet? <laughs> 24. He said, no, 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 I think again. He went, no, 24. He said, no, 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 I think you'll find it 26. No, he said, 24. I just blown up B and Q. <laughs> so, you know it's true. <laughs> Many a famous word been said in battle, mate. In the middle of battles, at the end of the battles, Beginning of battles, at the end of battles, Custer's last stand. He's laying there, 10,000 Indians round him. Two arrows up his bugle. Four in his chest. One up his sight lodge. And his dying word were, can't understand these bastards. They were all fucking singing and dancing last night. Trafalgar, Hardy and Nelson are walking up and down the deck and Hardy said, my lord, he said, I've been meaning to ask you on many occasions, he said, every time you go into battle, you always wear your red tunic. Why is that? He said, I tell you, Hardy, the reason I wear the red tunic is in case I get injured in the height of battle, the blood seeping through the coat, being the same color as the coat, the men won't notice I'm injured. Hardy said, what a fucking good idea, sir. <laughs> I think I'll put my brown trousers on. Hey, hey. Let's see, what sort of audience you are? I think an audience line is a try. Two sign hanging up, hanging up a neon sign for a well-known piping firm you may have heard of called Ackles and Pollock. And the one up the ladder said the one down below, Tommy, send up a letter P, will ya? Uh, he said, we ain't got a P, Dave, we've only got a letter B. He said, fuck, you know. We've messed up that London Brick Company sign, haven't we? <laughs> Prince Charles went to open a plastics factory in Middlesbrough. And he's got out of the bleeding Rolls Royce and the Philippines of this, this way, your highness. Prince Charles had a fox hat on with a full mask, a bloody towel hanging out the back and everything. He said, sorry, I really must ask you. He said, why are you wearing a fox hat? <laughs> he didn't say it was actually his mother's idea. He said, what do you mean, sir? He said, I was getting ready to come here today. Mother said, darling, what are your duties today? I said, well, actually, mother, I'm opening a plastics factory in Middlesbrough. She said, Middlesbrough. Where the fox hat? <laughs> a 
I went to the barbers today. He said, you're going bald, Mr. Reed. I said, well, fucking hurry up then. <laughs> Uh, anyway, and I see a few people here, I don't. Like a lot of people, I sat down on Christmas morning listening to the Queen's speech, and I was expecting her to open up with, fuck me, what a year I've had. But no, it was an annus horribilis year. It all started about 14 months ago, January before last, when the Queen had the Japanese emperor over here, Hiro Pingo. Remember him, slant my little bastard? <laughs> now, they're going down the mail when the awesome car, right? Queen sitting there, Prince Philip sitting there, Hero Finger sitting there. As they're going down the mail, one of these horses lifted its tail and went. <laughs> the Queen went. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus God. <coughs> Turn it in, will you? Hero <coughs> Finger went, hustle, hustle. The Queen said, I know what it fucking is, do you think? Prince Philip said, I'm sorry, my dears. That's all right, Philip. <laughs> I thought it was the horse. <laughs> mate, 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 I know I haven't seen him for years. Poor old fellow's got a stutter. I said, oh, yeah, Tom. He said, b -b 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 fine, mate. I said, are you still caught in that bird? Do you remember the one whose mother couldn't stand you? No, it's not on anymore. I said, what happened nearest? I went round to the other night. I went round to the other night. I went round to the other night to take her out, and she was upstairs getting ready. And I was trying to make some. I was trying to make some. I was trying to make some conversation with her mother. I said, look at the girl. Look at the girl. Look at the girl. Look at the girl. Look at the cat. The cat was scratching its back right in the middle of its shoulder blades. I said, I bet you will. I bet you will. I bet you will. Wish you could do that. But by the time I got it out, it was licking its arm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's nice to be back home, as I say. I was in Scotland last week. Got any jocks in? Make yourself at home, smash the fucking place up. <laughs> <laughs> now I go up to Glasgow twice a year to visit me hubcaps, you know. <laughs> fucking place. I've flown up there, got a cart in the airport, got on the gorbel, stuck me hand out of turn right, and some bastards nicked me watch. Pulled outside this hotel, a little jock boy come up to me and said, look after your car, mister. No, I said, oh, son, I've got a rock baller in the back, she looks after it. No, I said, it puts up fucking fires, does it? <laughs> Walked in this hotel, would have died. Even the arms of the chairs had tattoos on. <laughs> Piano in the corner had a bandage around its leg. I made myself look a right shit for brains. I'm not the geezer behind the counter. I went, away. Don't like your rules here, mate. Be in bed before I am. He said, it's be in bed before 1 a.m. <laughs> I'm going downstairs outside the manager's office. There's a sign, wanted chef. This fellow walks in. He said, Mr. Ramish, chef. He said, oh, what can you do? This chef got a loaf of bread. On the left-hand side, they've got a big bowl of butter. On the right-hand side, a huge bowl of salad. Up goes the bread in the air. On the way up, the chef slices it. Wee. On the way down, he butters it. Whoa. At the same time, he slings a salad bowl in the air, 10 seconds flat, a pile of salad sandwiches like that. He said, Monsieur, that is good. Is it good? He said, I've never seen nothing like that in my life, my old son. Anything else? This chef got three bowls. On the right-hand side, he got a dozen eggs. I will repeat that. A dozen eggs. He throws these eggs into the air and starts to juggle with them. In mid-air, he cracks them. Add some and eat. The yolk went in one bowl, the white went in another bowl, the shells in the middle bowl. He put the white and the yellow together in a single bowl, spun the bowl on his chin, put a fork in service mixing up at the same time, at the end of the room is a large dartboard. Out come a meat cleaver. Have some of that double top. He said, Monsieur, that is good. He said, that's unbelievable, my old mate. He said, do I get the job? Or is it no power? He said, you fuck about too much. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen to me. Listen to me. I've done the show. I've got to fly back. And I know a lot of people say they like flying. Oh, I 
I've got a cab I can drop me up outside the airport. I've got about an hour and a half to spare, right? I'm walking up and down, my bum's going in boo, innit? <laughs> I said his little cafe had a sign outside food at popular prices. I thought we're going in. I walked in, I said, do us a favour, old son, give us a cheese roll, meat pie, and a cup of tea, will you? She certainly. I said, how much is that? She said, £8.70. I said, £8.70. You got a sign outside, food at popular prices. He said, well, I fucking like them. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Listen. While I'm standing, another geezer coming. He went for the fella behind the counter. He said, can I have a breakfast? He said, of course you can. He said, you do it my way. He said, what's your way? He said, I'm a fried egg, but it's got to be hard. So hard that I can take it off the plate and actually bounce it up and down, bounce it up and down on the table. I want a bit of fried bread. It mustn't be crispy. It must not be crispy. It's got to be soaked in fat. So I want to put it on the plate. All the fat seeps out of the place. I want beans. They've got to be cold at the top, red hot in the middle, but burnt, burnt and black underneath. So I want to turn it all black. I want the bacon so well done that when you put the fork in it, it springs all over the room. He said, oh, I haven't got time to do that. He said, you fucking found time yesterday. <laughs> Unbelievable. I called the geese. I said, here, pat him up. Come here, here. I said, there's a worm in my meat pie. He said, that's fat. I said, it's entitled to be. It's eating all the fucking meat. <laughs> I'm sitting there, this bird come in, she came up to me, she went, hello. Well, hello. <laughs> Did you fancy a bun cup? I thought, oh, I said, I've only got two Bob girls. That's all right, I've got change. <laughs> I said, whereabouts when I've got a room upstairs? We've gone up, we both filled up. She went, I'm kinky. I said, so am I. <laughs> I've got her legs five past eleven over the shoulders. <laughs> Wee. Wee. Just squeeze me boo, squeeze me boo. I'll squeeze the little bastard. Don't worry. Uh, bite the nips, bite the nips. Arr, arr, arr. Get the cheeks in my ass, put them apart and slap them. Arr, arr, arr. Till it's come out, so I'm not surprised. I forgot what I was fucking doing. <laughs> She said, hurt me, hurt me, give me six inches, give me 12 inches, make me bleed. I thought, I'm in fucking trouble here. Yeah. <laughs> I've only got four inches and that's in the warm weather. <laughs> but I won't be outdone. I gave her that three times and punched her in the fucking nose. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got to fly back, right? Got to the bloody airport and I'm in an airport. Jesus Christ, for those who don't you don't like, the first word you see, terminal. Oh. <laughs> I'm standing there getting my ticket processed. Irish fella come in, push me at one side. He said to the girl behind the counter, could you tell me how long it takes to get to Heathrow to New York? She went, just a minute. He said, thanks very much. <laughs> For those amongst you who have flown out of Glasgow Airport, you know what I'm talking about. There's no bleeding staircases and elevators and all that game. You walk straight out of the tarmac, and there it was looking at me. Dan Deer Airways. <laughs> oh. I know the company's been sold, but the planes are still the same, and they? <laughs> they were refueling my one with logs. <laughs> I got on the plane and put my suit belt on. They took the steps away from the plane and it fucking fell on its side. <laughs> I said to the stewardess, how long does it take to get a Glasgow to Heathrow, darling? She said, four hours, 20 minutes. I said, four hours, 20. Should we do a bit of crop spraying on the way down? <laughs> I'm sitting there all of a sudden, this tapping coming up there. I've looked, there's a four ringer. Captain's at dark glass. I said, Excuse me, are you the captain? He went, Yes. I said, But you're blind. And he went, Yes. I went, <laughs> He said, No, come on, sir. No need to worry. He said, All our instruments today are in 
They're all in Braille. I've got no problems with it. So I said, where are they? Where are they? <laughs> I said, uh, how, how, do you, how do you taxi the plane out on the runway? He said, it's all done by my co-pilot. So he taxied out and leave the plane on the runway and I take over. I said, <laughs> I said what happened? <laughs> what happens then? He said, I get the clearance from the control tower, sir. I push the throttle forward and away we go. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> I said, how do you know when to take off? He said, well, as you know, sir, blind people have got extra sensitive hearing. And as soon as I hear all the passengers go, fuck it! <laughs> I pulled the stick back and 